Hi guys, and welcome back to another video. Today, I am so excited to be able to sit down and share with you guys my family curriculum picks for the upcoming 2024-25 school year. If this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Dana. I am a homeschooling mama to four little ones. And at this point, I've already shared my preschoolers curriculum picks as well as my second grade and third grade. And also, if you're new here, for our formal curriculum, the only formal curriculum that we do in our home in the season of life right now anyway, is a formal math, language arts, and kind of like reading, writing, and things like that. Everything else, especially when it comes to history, music, art, um, I, what else do I have down here? Science, Bible, things like that. Everything else is done as a family. So even though my language arts and math is definitely extremely grade specific based on what the child is ready for, everything else we do together as a family. And I love it so, so much. So everything in front of you are things that I kind of pulled and I gathered either from thrift books, from some local homeschooling conventions, and honestly, a couple of the things I had already had on hand that I wanted to be more intentional with using this year. I don't feel like I have a ton to show you today, but it's also things that is very practical and things that I know that we are actually going to cover in the next coming school year. Anyway, with all that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. So the past month or so, my little ones and I have been getting involved with doing watercolors. It is so much fun. We have watercolor paints, we have watercolor pencils, and it is just so much fun. And the best part is it is a very easy cleanup. So when the baby and the toddler wanna to join, which they always do join, it's a very easy, very easy cleanup. It's very different than like the acrylics and things like that that feel like I feel like never come off. Anyway, with all that being said, I wanted to be really intentional with actually doing a guided watercolor thing just because I know that we enjoy it so much and it is something that I love doing with the kiddos. Like I thoroughly enjoy it just as much as they do. So I ended up getting the watercolor with me. This is the In the Forest. I think the first place I heard about this was from Christina over at Rooted Homeschool. I'll have her channel linked down below because she is a very inspirational mama to me. I love watching her videos. She does a lot of like the on-schooling, nature schooling, things I know my kids love, but she also does a lot of art with her kids and especially watercolors. So I picked this up based on her recommendation and it is so beautifully, beautifully done. So one of my favorite things about this one in particular is on every single page, it will give you a page and this is watercolor paper. It gives you a page for actually practicing so you not only are learning about whatever nature thing that you are seeing but you're learning different techniques you're learning about the little critter or whatever it is that you're doing um, and I just I just love it so this is gonna be a beautiful beautiful addition to our home especially on those afternoons where it might be too hot to play outside and we just want to do some watercoloring so the next thing I'm gonna mention and I've shared multiple times on my channel so I won't stay on this too long but that is America's history this is the 1776 to 1791 we love the Tuttle twins books it is such a beautifully beautifully done series this is not a dry and boring history textbook. This is really following along our brother and sister as they explore all things American history. And I love it and my kiddos do too. So much to the point where they don't like it when I only read one chapter. Like they really get involved in the story. They wanna follow along. And then the fun thing about this is if you do wanna do a deep dive, say they so there's something that piques their interest, you can do a deep dive. You don't have to stick to just the book. That's one of the things that I love about homeschooling is you can really use something like this as your guide, but then go off and do your own thing, <laughs> which is kind of what we did with the first one. Um, but this is gonna be our intentional actual history thing for the upcoming year. So the next two books are honestly things that I'm just really looking forward to doing with my little ones. I cannot wait. And one of them, again, I've talked about so many times on my channel, but I'll mention it here again. Um, I did end up getting the five in a row volume two. I love five in a row. I cannot talk highly enough of it. I do not use this as a formal curriculum where I hit every single thing. And so I don't use it for language arts and for um, like those types of things. But this is what I use for geography. This is what I use for history. This is what I'm using for art. This is what I'm using for science. I love this. If you're not familiar with Five in the Row, and I've talked about it again many times on my channel before, it is a literature-based type curriculum. So on the table of contents here, you're gonna go through your book list. So you're gonna gather up your books, which I already got from, mostly from from thrift books and then also from secondsale.com is another one that I frequent when it comes to 
buying books for things like this. And I will also say that if you choose to do five in a row, getting all of the books to go along with it is probably the most expensive part. However, I also know that with the book lists that come with five in a row, they're extremely reputable. It's beautifully done children's literature. And I've never had any books so far anyway that I've had any problems with or anything like that. So I really trust their book lists and then the deep dives that they do. Um, but what it is essentially is it's five in a row. So you do five days in a row on the same book. So if you choose one book, for example, The Giraffe That Walked to Paris, on day one, you can do some type of a geography. So social studies, you can learn about Egypt, France, Mediterranean Sea. You learn about um, the right word at the right time. So relationships, you can also learn about history. So the idea is every single day you learn about something else until the point where at the end of the week you will have known just so such like beautiful concepts in and out of the story. So for your science, you'll learn animal behavior by reading the story. Um, you'll learn about seasons for this one. You, for math, you're gonna learn about measuring, counting. For art, you're gonna learn about humor, science, wind power, and animal care. And I love it because it's just small little tidbits. So by the time, again, at least in my personal experience, when we went through the entire volume one of five in a row, we had so much fun and just so many beautiful memories were built. But I think above all, like the book list that I got to go along with the volume one, those are still today my kiddos all time favorite books. And I know, I think at the end of our homeschooling journey, they're gonna look back and I feel like they're still gonna be some of their favorite kids books because I have a few books in my mind that just stood out because we used to read them a lot as a kid for myself. Um, so I feel like this is kind of providing them that same core memory when it comes to those books. So I know at the end of their journey, they're gonna look back and be like, oh, I remember doing that. And it's just such a beautiful thing to me. Along with the Five in the Row Volume 2, I also got, and I did not know existed, I just happened to be on thrift books like I am pretty much all the time, <laughs> looking at different books. And I found, and this is what I'm so excited about, guys. I keep saying I'm excited about everything, but I genuinely really am. I love these family subject type things. Anyway, it's another five in the row book, but this is the Christian Character and Bible Study Supplement. And when I saw this, I was like, oh my goodness. I thought for one, I thought it was going to have to go and buy a whole new other book list, but no, this is a supplement to use right alongside the volumes that you already have. And I love it. So stories from volume one, we already have volume one and all of the stories with it. So we have all of these books, we own them all. And I just purchased all of the volume two books. So I also have all of these. So this is one of those things where if you are wanting to have a Bible type curriculum, but a curriculum that really focuses on character, this is incredible. So what it is, I'm gonna kind of give a brief synopsis here really quick, but so the stories from volume one. So let's say the story about peeing. That was one of my all time favorite studies that we did with the kids, they adored it. So what we do is it's just like five in a row, only you're focusing on the biblical aspects and character in each story. So you're gonna have scripture to go along with it. So for the first part, a story about ping, you are gonna read 1 Kings 3, 9, and you're going to learn about the story about ping reveals the value of discernment. So you're gonna be talking about dis discernment. You're also gonna be bringing up issues of honoring, authority, obeying rules, um, responsibility, what those types of things look like. And then as well, you're gonna be talking about Jonah and you're gonna be talking about um, what consequences are, maturity in the Lord and everything like that, all with just one little page. So you're turning the simple thing like the story about ping, but now we can put it into a step farther and talk about the biblical aspect of what can we learn character-wise from this story. And I love this, I love this. I would say after everything that I'm showing you guys today, if you have already done five in a row, or are doing it, I um, highly recommend adding this on. I paid, I don't remember what I paid for, maybe $6 on thrift books. I think that's probably why I got it. For one, I was excited. I didn't know it existed. Um, I was I was so, so excited about it. So I'm gonna be using this alongside of volume two. So this is again, volume two is gonna be our, you know, history, science, all that fun stuff. But this is gonna be our core of what we're gonna be doing for character building and things like that. Along with characters, so I guess this isn't 100% the main thing, but to go along with it and when it comes to habit training and things that we're going to be intentionally working on with our little ones, and this is if you are a new homeschooling mama or a seasoned homeschooling mama, I cannot recommend this book enough. 
And the whole idea of this book is really Charlotte Mason's philosophy of the mother who takes pains to endow her children with good habits, secures for herself smooth and easy days, which is so true. So we are going to be going through this and kind of picking out a couple of new habits that we either want to work on, or honestly, this is something good to have on hand where if something comes up, say if you don't have any issue like core issues right now in your home, but if something does come up and you need a guide to really help you like how to instill these habits, or maybe you haven't thought about instilling habits in your home, um, this is a wonderful one. So there's anything from physical habits, moral habits, mental habits, health and hygiene, manners, um, you know, there's so much, so much things, even big tips on how to break bad habits if you are stuck in a bad habit. And I just love this book as a huge, a huge core of character development for little ones. And it helps me as a mama know how to approach it um, from a biblical perspective but also a gentle perspective as well um, I believe the two can be balanced very very well so I love love this book <laughs> something that I recently got and I do have a designated video on this is the five in a row again another five in a row this is the nature study spring and summer um, I had mixed feelings about this when I first initially did the flip through because it was not as detailed or what I was expecting. It is not like the original five in a row. This is going to give you a book list and you're going to read it, you know, five days in a row where this is more of a gentle guide. But I have been liking it because it gives just me just enough yeah, like I said, like that guide to be intentional about doing those nature studies with my little ones. I do have the handbook of nature study that we've really, really been enjoying. Let me actually go grab it. It's right behind me. One second. <laughs> All right, it is this one right here. As you can tell, this is a huge, thick book. If you are wanting a guide or if you want to do a 100% like what your child is interested type nature study, I would just recommend doing Handbook of Nature Study. It is huge but for, and it is not the most colorful, bright, interactive book out there. However, any question your child has about quite literally anything that God created is going to be in this book. So if you are wanting to start your day saying, what would you guys like to learn about today? Like a lot of the mornings that we start either around the breakfast table or before we even start our core curriculum, I'm asking what it is that they want to learn about today? Because I know that whatever it is that they choose, and honestly, every day is going to be a little bit different, but then there are some weeks where they want to div like dive in deeper to the same topic. But this has helped me a lot be really intentional with doing that. Whereas in this is more of like that strict guide, but you're going to have any anywhere from like you saw cloud formations, critters, fish, butterflies and moths, anything else. So if your kiddos don't know what they want to study, then I would open this up and let this kind of be your guide and then they might even want to take a deep dive, you know, from something that they read in here. But this is a wonderful um, option for if you again need something to help you be more intentional with what to teach when it comes to nature study, if your kiddos are into that. Uh, but this is more of the on-schooling thing where if they have a question, you got the answer at your fingertips. And this is the other thing too is I know I could get on my phone and look up the answer but I try not to touch my phone during school time just because it's distraction and I don't want my kids to think that there's a different focus of priority and so having this where I know that if they do have a question when we go into this or have a deep dive it's having something on hand where I can know that I'm gonna be able to open and get them an answer right away without having to stop and look it up and then get you know stuck in notification world and everything like that it's just easier for me anyway and my personality to have this on hand to where I know I'm gonna be able to answer all of their fun little nature questions the next thing is a book that we've already been diving into and to be honest we're already a third of the way through because it kiddos don't just want to do one page. However, if your kiddos do want to just do one page, if you need something to help you be intentional combining science and Bible together, this is a wonderful. This book is called Indescribable. It's 100 Devotions About God and Science. I also got this off of Thrift Books, but it is all about discovering the wonders of the universe with the Creator. I love this because it does a deep dive about one little tiny thing. And then so with that one little tiny thing, you're also learning a lot about like the biblical aspect of it. So for example, the other day we did how deep is the deep. The scripture memory verse was, Lord, you have examined me. You know all about me. You know when I sit down and when I get up, you know my thoughts before I even think them. 
And then it goes into the deep dive of the oceans are beautiful, amazing, and a mysterious place, at least to us. God, of course, knows all about them. And so then it goes into a deep dive of the, the deepest part of the ocean. And I love it because it incorporates things that my kids love while also having a very solid biblical background to it. So for them, since my little kids love all things like sciencey nature things, this is a great tool, at least for us it has been right now because it engages them because it's something they're interested in while also they can relate to it because they, for one, love studying about the ocean. So they relate to kind of knowing all about it already. And then when they put that into forms of like, wow, God knows the deepest part of my heart. And like, we might not even know everything, but he does. And so to them, it's very relatable. So they, it's very relatable. And I love the fact that it's quite literally just a page and a half. You can read the whole thing in five minutes and then have five minutes of discussion or wherever, you know, um, wherever the discussion leads, however long you want it to. Um, but I just love it. It's very simple. It is straight and open and go. And it has a little bit of science, just enough science to make the actual biblical aspect of it come to life when it comes to studying about God's creation. So I love this. Another Bible thing that I got, and this is going to be more of an evening time thing. This is 10 minute devotions to draw your family to God, long story short. This is going to take you from the beginning of creation all the way to the temple being built. So Genesis through Revelation. And I love this so much. So my husband and I were actually looking at this together this morning and he really, really liked it too. And so then we go into scripture, the actual scripture readings, we open up the Bible and do that together. And then there's a talk about it section. So it is very open and go. And of course near the end, uh, there's a pray about it where we're praising the Lord for creating such a beautiful world for us to live in. So this is, again, taking you Genesis through Revelation. So we're going to get tidbits of the entire Bible by the time we're finished with this. So this is going to be our intentional kind of e evening time devotional. Uh, and one more thing I want to mention when it comes to Bible curriculum. I have talked about on my channel multiple times and... I keep wanting to do a designated video, but I haven't yet. And there's a couple of reasons why. So we had used for a while back anyway, it might've been last year. I think we used it last year. And then into the beginning of this year, we used Foundation Worldview, their Bible curriculum online. And that is very much of a, of an, like an apologetics type thing. Speaking of apologetics, one second, I have one more thing I need to grab. Okay, I'll come back to these books here in a minute. As I was saying, Foundation Worldview, we ended up loving, loving that curriculum. We really, really did. If you are wanting a curriculum, so say you have things like this where you're doing the Bible reading, you're doing the Bible stories, but you're wanting something that is going to help your children really not just know how to defend them, their faith, but really truly believe their faith and what it entails like what do they know about god like are they going to be able to when someone challenges them how will they you know how will they speak the truth and love type of thing how do they know the difference between what a truth is and what a feeling is and the foundation worldview curriculum is phenomenal in the little years too and i'm only talking from personal experience i have not done past that like little years level i've heard incredible things about their high school ones and things like that when you do deep dives to apologetics and defending your faith. But if you're wanting something that has to do with really training your children up in today's culture, that's not just the Bible stories and not just the Bible reading, even though the yes, that is very, very important, but you also like when the children are challenged, like how are we defend your faith? How do you know that what you believe is a truth? You know, things like that. Um, and really measuring every single thing up in the world according to God's truth and God's standard and most importantly, God's word. Um, that's how we measure truth. And so this curriculum, um, Foundation Worldview, does a beautiful job in teaching our little ones how to measure everything up according to God's standards and not what anyone else says. So I love, love that curriculum. I cannot talk highly enough about it. The only reason why I have not done as a designated video on it is it is a little bit pricey. I believe for the, I, I wanna say it's a lifetime membership. It's for the little years, there's different grades. So per grade, I think it was like 125. And so when I initially purchased it, all of my little ones were in that same season. Now, as they're getting into more grade level, I'd have to purchase the next one up. And I just didn't want to do that. Instead, I have a couple of other resources I'm gonna share with you. Um, but most importantly for our family, I just did not want to do the screen thing anymore. Um, we have cut back really on our screen intake during the week and just do like a family night, movie night over the weekend. Um, but because of that, I wanted to find just 100% screen-free options when it comes to teaching the kids how to defend their faith, apologetics, and things like that. 
Anyway, ultimately, that is why I have not done the designated video is because we are not using it anymore. However, I really still highly recommend it, even though I'm not using it right now. I just can't um, swing the price tag on it right now. Anyway, um, the next two books that I do have when it comes to apologetics, I do have Daily Apologetics for Kids, Volume 1. I want to say I also got this at a homeschooling convention. So the reason why I picked this one up in particular is it really did remind me of Foundation Worldview when it comes to teaching kids apologetics. So your truth is not the same thing as my truth, does truth exist? How do we know something is true? Um, so we're gonna be reading kind of more along that. And they have a very, very firm foundation and a wonderful, just wonderful knowledge of really knowing that whatever is true has to be, you know, you know what, what God's word said, it doesn't matter what everyone in our life says or what people in the world say um, to be true. We really do need to measure up to scripture, especially nowadays. And then the other thing I got to go with the uh, apologetics, and this is one that we'll probably end up doing this fall. And this is a case for Christ for kids. It's the um, newer updated version of it. And we're just going to go through all of those hard Bible questions and we're going to have a great time doing it. I loved this one. I have read the case for Christ, like the adult version and thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. So I ended up picking up the kids version. So this, as well as this, is going to be like our apologetics type thing, whereas in all the other things, it's just going to be Bible reading with also character building and things like that. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be a good year. For our main read aloud this year, I've been wanting to do this one for a while, but I also wanted to find a version that was very kid-friendly and engaging because I know the story can be a little bit intense and overwhelming because it's so big, um, but that is Little Pilgrim's Progress. And when I saw this version, I was like, yes. <laughs> so this, this will definitely pique my little one's interest. I honestly just fell in love with the illustrations in this book. It is still obviously very heavy text, but it's going to have just enough pictures in it to where I feel like the kiddos will be a little bit more engaged than it was just me reading like a, a large novel. So this is gonna be a little bit easier to get through. Um, and I'm really, really excited to do a little Pilgrim's Progress with them. I am so excited, mostly because at the end of each chapter, I think the discussions will be really, really good as far as the meaning behind them. And I don't know, I'm really excited to hear like their thoughts on this as well. And then with this, I got a couple of little progress. This is the coloring and activity books. So these, by the way, this and like these types of books and then some of the other books I showed you guys are also going to be a part of my next video when I shared with when I share with you guys kind of what I got at some homeschooling conventions recently or a homeschool convention hall. So this will make an appearance again, but I did get this at a homeschooling convention from Grace and Truth Books. I love that vendor. They're so, so sweet. Anyway, with the purchase of this, they are giving away the Little Pilgrim's Progress activity books. And I thought these are just really, really right up my second and third grades alley. So there's gonna be mazes, there's of course coloring books, there's word search things. So just something fun that they can honestly do while I'm reading this, so. I was excited about that combination. <laughs> For my toddlers, I have already done this with them and they love this so much. I think it's because of the size of the book. They just think it's great. But this is called Truth for Toddlers, Five Big Bible Truths for Little Ones. So we go through God is good, um, God is in charge of everything, God made everything, God wants us to pray, and Jesus to, um, came to save sinners. But this has been so much fun. It is a little bit of a bigger book, so <laughs> typically what I have them do is I have them sit on the couch together and I'll sit on the floor and then we'll go through a lot of the big truths for toddlers and I love it so much. So this is God is good. So we are gonna learn about God today. The Bible tells us about God. So we're gonna show our Bible to the toddlers. The Bible says that God is good in every way. And so we'll read the scripture and let's see when God is good. It is such a sweet, sweet book full of just like simple biblical truths for toddlers as the name of the book suggests. But I do highly recommend this one. Um, it's fun, it's engaging. I think because of the size of it, as you can tell, it's really big it kind of piques their interest and it makes them just really excited about it as well. <laughs> that I think is everything I wanted to share with you guys today. I feel like it's a lot, but I also feel like it's not a lot. It depends, you know? Um, I think everything I did share with you are things that I know and I can be realistic with when it comes to, these are things I know that we'll actually be able to do and we'll actually be able to see to completion. So I did not want to overwhelm myself with 10 different science, 10 different history, 10 different art things, and no, I'd never be able to do any of them. And then I feel like when I over-prepare with either curriculum or books or things like that, it can almost make me feel even worse because I didn't get a 
hold on doing all the things so I feel like I'm always behind or I didn't do enough. Whereas then the amount I showed you are all things that we've honestly already started incorporating. We are by no means going to do all of this every single day. It's just gonna be maybe according, as I said in the beginning of the video, a couple times a week and then we'll rotate the things. But five in a row will definitely be a weekly thing. The Bible things will definitely be a nightly thing, um, you know, as best as we can do anyway. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. I really cannot wait. This is some of my favorite types of things to do with my little ones. Um, and I don't know, there's just five minutes here and five minutes there that even though that might be all the time we have, you can really instill so many beautiful things in your little ones, even if you just have five minutes. Um, if they're, for our kiddos, they love sitting up on the counter while I'm cooking. So that's really my time that I really try to be intentional with them because they have my attention because we're all kind of cooking and they're waiting on dinner because they're normally really hungry at that time. They're waiting on dinner. And so that's just a fun time for me. I can open up one of those little devotional books. I know there's not going to be a lot of reading involved, but I know that it's going to jumpstart a beautiful conversation. And so that's how we jumpstart those um, discussions. And I love it so much. It's such a it's such a fun season of life and I'm really thankful for just the privilege of being able to do all the things, you know. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys go. I will try to have everything I showed you linked down below. One thing I will mention as well is I will try to have the Amazon links down below, but I'm also going to have the businesses that I got these items directly from just to kind of expose more of them. So I have Grace and Truth Books, Rainbow Resource, Christian Book, and of course, Surf Books. And then I will have Christina's channel linked down below if you are wanting some more inspiration for just some beautiful enriching things for your homeschool. I highly recommend checking her videos out. Um, I love watching her again. But anyways, thank you guys again for watching. Until my next one, you guys have a great day, whatever you're doing, and God bless. Bye guys.